So we have a meteorite that enters the Earth's atmosphere at an extremely high speed. 30 kilometers per second is in fact a typical meteorite speed. Um, the atmosphere slows it down. It's traveling relatively slowly, only one kilometer a second when it hits the surface. If half the heat generated as it passes through the atmosphere is absorbed, how hot will it be when it's about to land? Okay, so let's work that out. This, how do we work this out? Well, let's draw a diagram, as always. So we've got the Earth's surface. We've got our meteorite coming in. We don't know the direction. At a speed of V1 and a height of H. And then some time later it's hitting the ground at a much lower speed of V2. Now this looks totally like a energy problem. Well, how do we know that? Well, first of all, it's talking about heat, rise in heat, that's energy. We also don't know the initial direction of motion or the trajectory or anything like that. So light on in details, all we know is initial and the final state, and heat being involved, it's a dead giveaway. This is an energy problem. So, what must be happening here? Um, it starts off with potential energy and kinetic energy. At the end, its potential energy has mostly gone away, and a lot of its kinetic energy has gone away, and its, and its kinetic energy has mostly gone away as well. And we're assuming that half the change in energy has gone into the heat. So, initial energy is half m v1 square kinetic energy. Potential energy, um, remember there are two forms of this. There's mgh, which is used when the change in height is small compared to the distance from the center of the object, and the full version gmm over r squared, which is used, well, you can use it all the time if you like, it's always fine, but it gives more or less the same answer um, unless you're traveling a long way from the center of an object. In this case, h is 100 kilometers, which sounds a lot, but it's a very small fraction of the radius of the Earth, 6,400 kilometers. So, in fact, the mgh approximation will work just fine. So, we get mgh. Final energy is going to be half mv2 squared. And the difference between them is going to go into heating up it. So, the difference... But uh, how much hotter is it getting? So the thermal energy change is going to be the mass times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature equals half E1 minus E2. And we can plug those in to get it. This turns out, if you rearrange it, gives us that delta T equals G H plus half M V V one squared minus half M V two squared, running out of space there, all divided by 2 times specific heat capacity, which gives us a temperature change of about um, 5 by 10 to the 5 Kelvin, half a million degrees. Now, let's check plausibility. There's not really much to check here. We have an energy here equals an energy there. These are all energy terms. This number, on the other hand, is just staggering. Um, an asteroid or meteorite at this side couldn't possibly survive. The iron melts at about a thousand degrees. This is far, far above for that. This would turn into an X-ray plasma. So that's much too high. Um, and in fact, we know that um, several meter across size meteorites do in fact land on the Earth's surface. It's the smaller ones that burn up to form shooting stars. So how can it land? when the temperature rise is so immense. 
Well, it must be that, in fact, most of the heat is not going into the meteorite. And in practice, what happens is a lot of the heat goes into the air, and a lot goes into burning off a very thin layer on the outskirts uh, of the meteorite. So the meteorite might lose its outer metre, burnt away, while the inside remains relatively cool. So that's how things of size can penetrate the atmosphere. So the answer does look implausible, and that's telling us that our assumption that half the energy goes into the meteorite is in fact wrong.